Hey, what's going on people? Check it out. This is another quick gospel lick. You guys asked me before when I did it, you wanted another one, so here it is. So to some of you, this may sound a little familiar. I played this a while back. <laughs> So the cool thing about that line, it was really familiar to me because I played a lot of the elements inside of it. It had a lot of bebop lines, a lot of chromaticize, a chromaticism in it. And that was some of my go-to licks already that I would play, just not in that order particularly. So uh, that was in a key of A flat, so don't pay attention to that. All I'm doing is moving it up in, uh, to the key of B flat. I can play it in A flat too, but for this instance, I ended up playing in B flat. I don't know why, but anyway, go with me. So I played it in B flat, so to start off this lick, I want to actually understand the concept behind it. So when you play a bebop dominant seventh scale, you'll find that this is where it derives from. This is a mixolydian scale. Now that's very similar to a bebop dominant seven because a dominant scale is a mixolydian scale with a flat, flat seven. So, or just mixolydian scale in general. So with this one, a bebop dominant scale, actually an eight note scale where you add that major seven inside of it and one little trick that you can do is to play that descending once you descend these type of licks you end up sounding more gospel -ly. i don't know if that's a word but anyway we're going to use it so once you play that lick backwards so you really get the essence of hearing that sound descending especially with this line so just keep that in mind let's go from the top so starting on the fifth note or the octave of the fifth note of B flat, okay? I'm gonna be using scale numbers or scale degrees with you guys. So five, chromatically down to half steps, okay? So to the four, we're gonna turn it around from the minor three to the major three, okay? Four, three, two, finger numbers. One, two, let's do it again. Four, three, two, whole step down, one, two. Got it? Next, we're gonna turn it around. Da -da -da, root six, five. Okay, B flat, G, F. So, all together. And this is actually a repetitive line, so you're gonna hear the same exact thing as you did in the beginning, just an octave lower. Let me show you. Turn it around. Now, again. So what I did was I added that filler in there, that chromatic line from the root note to the G. Root note. Now play the same exact line we did in the beginning, an octave lower. I missed a note there. There it is. So put it all together. Really want to take these things into sections when I play these types of licks, especially if they're if they're longer licks and not just kind of fills, I want to break it up into sections. So starting from the first section, that's one section. That's the second section. Next section. Next section. Next section. So you see what I mean? So I'm just breaking it up into phrases. And if you can see, we're playing the same exact line an octave lower inside of that riff. But anyway, you can put this all together. Let's actually do that right now. And that's a uh, B flat seven sus, if you guys are wondering what that chord was. But anyway, so take this slow, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. That's the thing about this lick. You have to make sure it's coming out clean. Before uh, I recorded this lesson, I, and I set everything up i started playing and i was warming up and i got a little frustrated with myself because i played this lick and i it was some years ago when you seen that clip is some years back so i was a little bit quicker uh but i just have to get that speed back up and my hands were just on fire when i tried to play it it's still fumbling right now but so when i went to play this at the speed that i wanted to i found out that that g here wasn't coming out at all. I was trying to figure out why. So I had to take my own advice and slow it down. 
And if you guys were wondering, if I haven't said it already, this song was by, or this lick of this portion of the song was by Quinnell Gaskin. It's the whole entire song. I'll probably put a link to it in the description. It's called Here Comes the King. I'm not sure. It's an album full of like praise break songs. Incredible. He's a piano player. Just crazy. He had everybody doing that same line. The horns, the keyboard, everybody it was just crazy. <laughs> But anyway, I found that very, very interesting, and I love the lines that he used inside of it. Uh, awesome player. Check him out if you have a chance. So putting this together is probably the most difficult part, just uh, you know, piecing those sections together and just making it flow. And the fingering is very important as well. If I didn't go over that, let's do that again. Um, so we have four, three, two, one, two, four, one, four. I'll have this written out for you guys too as well. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, four, one. Shift back to that five. So the same exact line. Root six, five. And then we're back home to the one. Got it? And if you guys are interested in learning more about gospel licks, where they derive from, and just how to maneuver around the fretboard a little bit easier, just take your bass playing to that next level, check out the Bass Nation Academy. There's a three-day free trial. It's going to be in the description. Or I'll put a link up to it here. Check it out and see if you like it. There's live classes. There's tutorials. There's personal access to me. I can give you feedback. And there's video Q&A sections, all that, blah, 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 blah. Check it out. See how you like it. If I didn't say it before, I'm saying it again. It's great to say again. Anyway, make sure you know it's coming out clean, clear, and precise. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.